So a pretty hot topic in the camera game at the moment is action cameras. Now when you say action camera, I think there's one brand that comes into everybody's mind and that's GoPro. I remember being a kid and always being wowed by the GoPro promotional footage that every single year, without fail, I would go and buy the brand new edition of the GoPro and be sorely disappointed with the footage that I could personally get out of it compared to GoPro's promotional videos. And I don't think I'm the only one riding that boat. Earlier this year though, Insta360 released the X3 and we reviewed it and it was one of my favorite gadgets this year. What you could do with that camera was outstanding. And now GoPro have just released the Hero 11. So how does that stack up against Insta's X3? In today's video, we're gonna put them head to head. So like anything good, this isn't going to be easy, putting these two cameras head to head, because in all honesty, there isn't one that's completely better than the other. They both shine their own light in certain areas, and what we're gonna try and do with this video is make that obvious for you, so it will influence your buying decisions. Let's start this out with mounting, because where you put these cameras is gonna influence the shots that you get from them. So, both cameras are completely different in their design and form factor. Both are compact enough to fit into your bag or into your pocket, however, the GoPro takes the cake on its compactness because it's great for squeezing into tight spaces for niche shots that you might wanna get. For example, let's say you had the thing mounted underneath your skateboard. That would be somewhere that I would feel hesitant to mount my X3 just because of its exposed lenses. But then one big win for the X3 in my opinion is its actual mounting versatility. And what do I mean by that? Now, you'd think GoPro would take the cake for this because they have the proprietary GoPro mount, but that is actually the reason why I'm not so fond of this because the amount of times over the years where I've had to go out and personally buy extra proprietary mounts for my GoPro is annoying and has definitely added up to probably more money than I've spent on individual GoPro cameras over the years. On the latter, the Insta360 has the tripod mount on the bottom, which is a standard mount basically for for all cameras, it's universally compatible. So whether you wanna simply mount this thing on a tripod or simply get like a third party suction mount for your car that has a tripod hole in it, you will be good to go. No proprietary mounts needed. Both of the cameras come with fairly large touch screens, which is ace for actually navigating and controlling whichever camera you go for. However, the GoPro actually has two screens, one on the front and one on the back, which makes things super, super easy when you're trying to frame your shots, especially if you're trying to do something like film yourself in the vlog style. -y. But the thing is with the Insta360 is you don't actually need the screen in the same way you do on the GoPro to frame your shots. And that's because with the Insta360, with its whole 360-ness, you can reframe and pick your shots later in post. And we'll go more on that a little bit later in the video. What you're gonna be mainly using the touchscreens for on both of these cameras is to dial in and change the certain settings because both of these cameras are absolutely packed to the brim with things that you can customize and change. One thing I have found through testing though is the Insta360 just feels quicker and simpler and more intuitive to use. For example, let's say you want to change the ISO, which is a pretty basic camera feature if I do say so myself. On the GoPro, you have to go to resolution, tap on the pencil, swipe a few times, and then you get your ISO selection. Whereas on the Insta360, you swipe left, click manual, and click on ISO. And I think this is something that people haven't really mentioned, but with these action cameras, let's say you're snowboarding or skiing down the side of a mountain and you wanna quickly change your settings, it's more of a faff to do it on the GoPro than on the Insta360. And when you're taking these action cameras out and about with you, it is really important that you are able to quickly change these settings on the fly because it's not like what we're doing here where we're controlling the lighting and it's one shot. These action cameras go with you into different places, different conditions, and changing the settings is something that you're going to be doing a lot. And it's definitely easier to change settings on the Insta360. It's just 
more intuitive as well. So let's just leave all the 360 stuff to the side for now. We'll come back to that later and focus on what Insta call me mode, which is basically keeping one subject locked center, not 360 video, a more linear style of video like what you're seeing by now. This is 16 by nine, but you've also got the opposite, nine by 16 for stuff like Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. The X3 will actually keep you locked center of frame so you can do all the talking and basically just know that you will be in the center. Both cameras record in 5.7K at 30 FPS, and this is a test side by side of both the cameras in their standard color profiles. Okay, so this is the GoPro in its hyperview mode recording in 5.3K, and as you can see here, you can see the handle in this shot. Now, that isn't something that you would be able to experience with the Insta360 because it simply just gets rid of whatever's underneath it. So this is me mode on the Insta360 and it's a bit of a strange one because basically I'm holding this selfie stick out at a 90 degree angle from my body right here and it's stitching together between the two lenses which is super super neat. I don't know what I feel about this though because I'm just holding this pole out. I also can't see the screen so I don't know what this looks like but I assume that me mode is just capturing all of me. However I think this mode really shines if you shoot in 9x16 for things like mobile applications, reels, YouTube shorts because you can get some really cool perspectives like this. <laughs> Now this is me shooting in 360 degrees doing a vlog style talky piece to this camera. And as you can see, I can reframe this shot and then look back at me if I would like to. And that is the complete freedom you get with this camera is that if something happens over there, I can show you without even having to move my hand. I just do it all later in post. And because this camera is on a really large stick, I can get some really cool shots like this. And you just can't do stuff like this with the GoPro. No way. Now also with the Insta360 X3, you can shoot in single lens mode, which gives you an FOV of around 170 degrees. The GoPro comes in at a snail's pace here with its maximum FOV of 141. So it's definitely a wider field of view that you're gonna get out of the X3, which basically means you're gonna capture more of the action. And with these being action cameras, I don't see how that's a bad thing. There is also nothing more flexible when shooting than being able to not even think about whether your subject is in frame and basically being able to reframe it later on perfectly in the comfort of your own home behind your computer. If you say for example you had the X3 and the GoPro mounted let's say on the front of your motorcycle you're basically going to get two shots for one out of the X3. Later in post, you could decide whether the camera is aiming at the road that you're currently traveling down, or it's aiming back at the rider on the bike. Whereas with the GoPro to achieve the same type of shot, you will basically need to buy two GoPro cameras, have one facing forward and one facing back, which again is doubling the cost here. You see, one of the things I like about the Insta is that you can look at me right now, but then you can also look at this ice I'm about to push down there. I can't even see that, but you can. And then you can see me, and you can also see behind me. Now here's the same setup using the GoPro. You can see me, and I bet the quality is really good because single mode on the GoPro, the quality is flawless. But if you wanted to see the front tire, you couldn't. I would have to move the camera like this, which if I'm driving is kind of a difficult thing to focus on. Now for years, the GoPro has always been the king of getting those really tight, hard to get shots that you just think to yourself, how have they got a camera at that sort of an angle? But I wouldn't say these are necessarily trick shots. For example, with the X3, you have typical things like the invisible selfie stick trick, which basically when you attach a long stick to the X3, it basically cancels out what is in between both of the lenses. So you can put the X3 out on a really large stick and that stick is not going to be in frame no matter how hard you try to see it. This is how you'll have seen all over social media those viral iconic GTA walking shots. These types of shots are done with the X3 specifically, just with a selfie stick coming out the back of somebody's bag. 
Now, let's talk stabilization because having stable footage is something that everybody needs in this day and age out of their action cameras. Because let's face it, when you strap these to yourself and you're out hiking or doing whatever you're doing, there is a lot of camera shake. So any way these companies can mitigate that is a welcome feature. Over on the Insta360, we've got flow state stabilization and on the GoPro, we have hyper smooth. The flow state on the X3 basically just looks like it's floating and it's able to achieve this insane stabilization because it has such a wide field of view. Now don't get me wrong, GoPro's Hyper Smooth is really quite smooth, but it isn't again a scratch on what the X3 can provide with its ultra wide field of views and ability to really smooth out all of those shakes and vibrations you're getting from wherever you're mounting these cameras, whether it's on top of a car or on your chest. Now both of these cameras do come with apps. Now, one thing I really liked about the X3 was its app integration when we reviewed it three or four months ago. I think that it worked really well and it was much faster to connect and control the camera than that on GoPro's side of the fence. You can also live preview on the X3 whilst it's recording and that's something that you can't do on the GoPro. As soon as you click record, your live preview is cut from the app. But both of them do have the option to edit inside of the app. However, I have heard but haven't seen that there is some paid options, some features hidden behind a paywall inside of the GoPro app that are to do with editing. Whereas on the Insta360, everything is free. So you can basically refilm, reshoot, redo anything to your Insta360 footage within the app, export it to your camera roll without paying an extra dime. The Insta360's app also had some more things that stood out to me due to the actual Insta360 camera's hardware. You can do things like a complete sky swap, which again seems like a bit of a gimmick, but when I tried it out, it was actually quite cool and I did enjoy using it. It's definitely a more streamlined experience than on the GoPro. However, I think that most people with the GoPro won't be using the app. They'll use the camera, record what they're recording, and then take the memory card out and put it in your computer. You honestly don't need to do that with the X3. You could simply just use the app because it's that good, but it's nice that you do have the option for both. Obviously, you can use the studio app on a PC by taking out the memory card and putting it in your PC to edit your files. So this has been a really fun video to put together. I've always been into action cameras ever since I was a little kid, like I said, buying all of the GoPros through the promotional media. And when they released the 11, I thought it would be a missed opportunity not to put the X3 up against the 11, just to see what the action camera playing field is currently playing like. I think if you got either one of these cameras, you really wouldn't be disappointed, but between me and you, I think if you could only get one, you should get the X3 because it's way more versatile. Unless you need a really small camera to mount in really specific places, I don't think you can go wrong in this day and age with the X3. But anyway guys, these have only been my thoughts. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.